All right, so as we talk about emotions that are explained in the whole chapter three, there are uh, a lot of generalities that are going to be explained, but I also wanted to dive into an additional piece of information that the textbook does not cover. And that is Plutchik's um, wheel of emotions, all right? So what this is, is a more detailed explanation of all of the elements that um, are explained in this chapter, okay? Now, this is going to be foundational because by understanding emotions and how we communicate emotions to others and how we respond to how people communicate their emotions to us is what we call, when it's done effectively, productively, healthfully, emotional intelligence. So today I'm going to introduce you to uh, an amazing researcher named Daniel Goleman, but I'm also going to be introducing you to additional elements that intensify or really personify the whole concept of what we're trying to do. And the bottom line of emotional intelligence is that you know how to behave in certain circumstances. That's going to be good for you and good for the other. That's sort of the quick translation. There's more components to it, which you'll figure out, but that, that's what we're looking for, okay? So this diagram is explaining that there are a number of different kinds of emotions that we experience, and each one of these goes deeper in color and the deeper you go into the color, the more center you are on the diagram, the more intense is the emotion, the more intense. So everything out here is kind of, yeah, I'm feeling a little contempt toward the person, but when I go inside, when I go in, 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 um, if it's contempt that's going into annoyance, all right, so this would be sort of the secondary, this would be the primary. Then I would go into, yeah, I'm a little, you know, annoyed. Oh no, now I'm mad. And now I get into rage, all right? So you can see, and you know it from your own feelings, that there are gradations, okay, or degrees of how we feel certain emotions. And this um, researcher was able to identify quite a few of them. Now, some of these you think about a lot, and some of them you don't. Partly because you never had a word to reflect your emotion, all right? So what this is all about is helping you to select the best word that's gonna represent who you are, all right? Any questions about this? Make sense? All right, good. Now, I've also given you right here a really good um, link to a website that will go into um, more information. And what's really cool is when you go into this website, you can click on the different ones and get more information. So you can see how they get highlighted. So we go from the outside, we go into intensity, and we look at how it's all explained, all right? And when you click on these, then you can go and you know really explore them further. So for more detailed information, there it is. So you can imagine when you click on these that you can explore, you know, this is the high degree. If you want to go out into a lesser degree, all right, you can click on that. And then you can see that there are some complementary or opposites um, and opposites that will um, give you even more information. Okay, so this is in your website for you and um, in your Moodle. And this you might find rather interesting. There is also a short video, which I'm not going to show you, 
um, that there is a person who talks about the ABCs of emotions, and he is a member of an institute that does research, and it's a very good one. All right. So, no questions? All right, so now let's go to the next one. This is my favorite of all diagrams in all the world, all right? The reason it's my favorite is because this is how we coach people and ourselves to behave in the most effective way possible, but also in the most considerate way. Now, I want to explain how this works because the arrows are important to understand and with the elements. So it always starts up here with the self. The most important thing to do about our emotions is to have self-awareness. And that's why being able to identify the exact emotion that you're feeling in the moment will help you to have that complete self-awareness, all right? So that's part of being schooled is the expression to learn them. So being self-aware means that you accurately assess how you're feeling in the moment. Right? You know there's a difference between being annoyed, being angry, and being rage, pissed off. Now, if you think about that, that's going to be valuable when you're trying to express to somebody. If you tell somebody, if Bailey's talking to somebody and she says, uh, I'm really angry at you. Does that sound like she's really angry? No, correct. So the words and the music are not going together. So, a, and, and a person's going to respond to that word, you know, that she's angry at me. All right, so what you'll want to do is to say, I'm a little annoyed at you right now, or I'm annoyed at you, okay? Doesn't that feel a little bit less intense, like I'm not gonna kill you, right? Versus, oh, I am enraged toward you right now, right? So that's the self-awareness, and that you have the self-confidence to communicate it. Okay, so my friend here, Megan, is already self-disclosed when her um, tale, uh, when her report is on the conflict uh, example. Okay, and you all have to do the conflict. You all have to do E, and you have to then do either uh, C or D today. You don't have to do E today, but you have to do C or D today. Okay, just the first response. Okay, now. So she's already shared what she is. And as soon as she told me that, bingo, I've got an understanding of how she interacts with people when she has a certain amount of um, emotional uh, investment in a conflict, okay? So she now knows her awareness. She can stick to it and be what she is, her go-to, all right? Or she can now say, you know what? I'm getting pretty smart after taking this case class. So now I know that I can identify what the real emotion is and communicate it to the person who needs to hear it. All right? So the arrow then goes down. And this goes into, okay, now that I am aware and I have the confidence to communicate it and I'm able to accurately identify what the emotion is, I am now ready to manage myself. I am now ready to be in control, all right? I can be transparent in that I can tell people non-verbally as well as verbally what the emotion is. However, I can adapt. I can take a look and say, oh, this is a classroom right now. I may be really ticked off at the instructor, but this is not going to be the place and time for me to respond. Right? So I'm going to adapt and pick a better time. Um, and I'm going to do that because I want to achieve a good relationship, good well-being. I want to be able to have a relationship with an instructor that's going to be positive 
And so the instructor is not going to give me a bad grade. And the ability to take initiative, to not go and hide, do not avoid, do not pout, okay? but to take the initiative to step up and to express what's going on for your heart and your head. All right, now for, so you go from self-awareness to self-management, but then you also go from self-awareness to social awareness. So remember I said that you need to be attention to like we're in the classroom and in front of others, so now's not the time for me to start yelling at my teacher. That's social awareness. That's understanding what's the organizational structure. There's hierarchy, there's peers. Do I want to embarrass my teacher or do I want to, which is empathy. I wouldn't want to be embarrassed. So I'm not going to throw my teacher under the bus right now because that's not being empathetic toward a teacher. Even though I'm angry at her, I don't need to be um, you know, a bully, right? Or an asshole. I love that word. But you know, sometimes people are just assholes, right? And they just, ah. Uh. So, no, you're not going to do that. You are going to have the awareness of the setting, who and where and when you are in the circumstance where you want to express what you want to say. You know, I mean, social awareness. If you want to tell the most important person in your life that you love the person, for some people, doing it on the big jumbotron is not the best idea. Others may love it. So you're going to have the social awareness and a service that you care about the other person's response to know, I'm not going to do the jumbotron to ask the person to marry me. Okay. Now then, so this goes this way, this goes here. Then this goes over here and this goes over here. So this is bingo, bingo, bingo. This is what's so valuable. The emotionally intelligent person is the one who gets promoted. It's the person who follows in a leadership role and steps up and becomes a leader. The person who has the highest amount of social intelligence is usually, not all the time, because we do know there are some people who are not quite sure how the person got where they are, right? But for the most part, these are the inspirational leaders. These are the people who will develop others. The biggest thing that ever happened to me was when my employees got jobs someplace else. I was happy for them. They got promotions. They were able to move on and move up. That's a reflection on me as well as on them. So you're going to develop others. You're going to influence. You're going to be a catalyst for change within an organization. You see that that big, the second may not be working. You are also good at managing conflict and resolving conflict. We can talk a lot about that later. Through this relationship, you are building bonds. I have bonds with people who I have worked with since the 1970s. Amazing, amazing relationship. And of course, in the here and now, to have cooperation and teamwork, right? That's Daniel Goldman's whole concept. He says that you've got to have recognition and regulation. You gotta see it and you gotta manage it. He also says though that you have to have social awareness. Where are you? Who are you talking to? Who is around you? What's the setting? What's the hierarchy? And then he also says, oh my gosh, if you care about the relationship, if you care about you and the other person being in a relationship, then you are going to act in the other person's best interest. Questions? Go ahead. Daniel Goldman. Daniel Goldman. Okay, so let me turn this off. Oops, that's not the one I want. This one. 